Call of Duty Modern Warfare 22 marks a major turning point for the franchise, the end of annual releases. Hell, it's about time. Only took you two decades. This two-year commitment plan ensures the devs have more time to polish their games, and it allows Infinity Ward to take the gloves off. Where's the gloves off? They're off. And come out the gate swinging with a solid entry into the franchise and a robust live service ready to keep the momentum up. When you take the gloves off, you get blood on your hands, Kyle. Since Activision is slowly transitioning away from slave labor, there's no rush to release a new title, which leaves Sledgehammer and the other studios ready to support Infinity Ward. This is a major plus for this year's COD, as it seems Activision is doing the unthinkable and prioritizing a good video game over profits. It's impossible! But we'll see how they monetize this game. With the launch of Season 1 on November 16th, Infinity Ward will have addressed many complaints about missing features, modes, and quality of life stuff. They'll have launched Warzone 2.0, a DMZ mode, Hardcore. This is the Call of Duty they want you to invest your time in. But the question is... Is it worth your investment? That's what we'll be answering today, folks. For those keeping track, yes, this is the first new Call of Duty I've reviewed that I think is worthy of being called awesome and nothing else since Black Ops 2, man. Okay, yeah, throw your tomatoes at me. I stand by my opinion and respect yours if you disagree. Bitch. You see, ever since Black Ops 2, COD hasn't been able to put all the pieces together. Either the maps are terrible three-lane garbage, the game crashes every other match, they launch a Spec Ops mode that's so difficult you'd rather shave your balls with an electric razor, or the cutscenes freeze and stutter for some reason, or worse, you get three duplicate pistol grips in a loot box you opened on the beaches of Normandy, or they monetize weapons and power-ups for zombies in multiplayer. Or they don't have those new dog models. They scrap the campaign thinking it isn't important. They make a terrible campaign thinking it isn't important. For almost a straight decade, something has always been seriously wrong with Call of Duty games. Until now. This isn't the best COD by any means. However, out of the last decade, it's the one that screws up the least. But before we jump into it... Go, go, go. This area is clear, Captain. Ghost man, plug into their database and do what you are there to do. Rog, installing Opera GX, the best internet browser for gamers in the world, and the sponsor of today's video. Are you a gamer? Yes. Do you use the internet? Yes. Well, then you need Opera GX, a browser built and made for gamers that's so good you won't want to use anything else. The main page GX corner has a plethora of awesome features. A calendar shows a list of any minor and major releases. Letting you stay up to date on when NAC 3 is coming out, baby. Are you like me? Do you not want to close your browser every time you game on PC? Worried about performance? Worry no longer. GX Control allows you to optimize performance and lower the amount of CPU and RAM that the browser uses. Can't blame the lag this time, Boyle. Do you hate getting flashbanged? Well, now you don't have to suffer. Just force dark mode onto any page or website you're using. Stay connected with your friends and your team by using Discord through GX. You can even get Get notifications on the sidebar when your favorite Twitch streamer goes live. Hey, what's up? GX Corner also keeps you informed on any sales or free games. If you're really cool, you'll click the link in the description and pin comment and download Opera GX today. And if you do use that special link, you'll be able to see my last 12 uploads in the GX Corner. So go do it, soldier. Download Opera GX today. It's totally free. You've got nothing to lose. Do it to enhance not only your computer, but your gaming street cred. Thank you, Opera GX, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. But what exactly does Modern Warfare 22 do right? Why has this game struck a chord with me? Does it excel in all three areas? And more importantly, is this a worthy successor to the original Modern Warfare 2? Well, Let's find those fucking missiles, whip out our noob tubes again, and no rushing our way straight into this. Okay, okay, okay buddy. Guess it's a fucking Brits. What's up, baby? Fuck you! There's also yeah, an enemy on the tank. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what the... The more things change, the more they stay the same. Oh 
ride shield. I'm a pussy that use ride shield. Hey, if you're the one using that ride shield, suck a dick. Boundary shift. New players step in. Fucking ride shield. for the challenges, it, man. What do you want him to do? <sighs> go fuck himself. I want him to go fuck himself. But power always finds a place to rest its head. I like taking candy from a baby. <sighs> You had six kills and three seconds on the hard point. Easiest six nothing. kills of my life. <laughs> <laughs> In many ways, Modern Warfare 22 is a time machine that takes me back to 2009, sitting in those Xbox Live parties that some say kids couldn't survive these days. If you are black, please leave my team right now. What the fuck's wrong with you? Yet every year the same thing happens. A new COD comes out and parts of the fan base call it the worst. They say they'd rather play ghosts as they sniff glue and huff paint. While the game certainly makes me sweat a lot more than I'd like to and it has many other issues, bottom line, I'm having lots of fun. Oh, nice. I spawned in the bathroom. I gotta go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you just... And I'm breaking free of the eternal pessimism that plagues this community and fan base. The stakes were high for Modern Warfare 22, more than any other. It's both a sequel to the most revolutionary COD released in the last 10 years, and it's a reboot of arguably the series' most iconic entry. So if you're taking the name of the GOAT and building hype off of it, you gotta respect that legacy. Vanguard set the bar so low, Vern Troyer could jump over it. God rest his soul. So 22 was in prime position to get things back on track. But let's check out the campaign. 2019 in Cold War killed it in this regard. But how does this stack up against the OG? In terms of gameplay? Oh, fuck yeah. It's, it's way better. Is it better in terms of story? No! Right off the bat, Infinity Ward breaks the mold by reminding everyone Call of Duty actually does have characters. You've done this before. <laughs> Many times, Sergeant. Since you were in diapers. Well, in fairness, he was probably potty trained by that game. Still am, sir. Well, we'll check your ghillie suit when this is over. Enter the return of Simon Ghost Riley as he walks through a desert mountain pass. We're looking to take out a guy called General Gabre Gabrera. General Gabrani. Visual on General Gabrani. Gabrani. You know, he's a guy. He's a bad guy. Doesn't have any spoken dialogue, but he's supplying Iran with weapons, and, and that's not good, so uh, let's kill him. Ghost, you are danger close to the zone. This arrow is gonna pack a punch. Copy. Pack a what? Pack a punch. Did, did he just confirm Zon? Predator missile ready for launch. Repeat. Predator missile ready for launch. Missile in blue. <laughs> That's how you start a COD campaign. Quick segue, guys. I have an important announcement to make. Boom! I'll be coming out with my very own X-Man U2s. That's right. You yourself can be the proud owner of this fantastic masculine badass. These will be coming out on uh, December 9th, but just wanted to give you guys a heads up that that's when we'll be uh, opening to pre-orders. You are going to want to get one of these bad boys. Look at that. They even got my tattoo. December 9th. <laughs> Next scene takes place uh, several months later. Laswell, the lady from the first game who helped you out with intel, goes to talk to a uh, General Shepard. Gen we have the DSF. General who? We got it, sir. Good. That's one less loose end. No! The two discuss the next Muslim man that they're having problems with and want to assassinate with missiles. Hassan Zayani. Apparently, this Hassan has given up live streaming and pursued terrorism. And he's not too thrilled with us calling in a predator missile on General Gorbachev. Well, let's get him. When? What time is it now? 
Who do we send? Oh, 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 coach! Coach, send me in! Send me in! I'm ready! I'm ready! MW22 kicks off the fan service by bringing back everyone's favorite Scottish badass. Let's get ourselves a win, yeah, LT. So McTavish and pairing him with the enigmatic ghost. It's a match made in heaven, and the two got plenty of catching up to do as they don their night vision goggles once again and head out to capture Hassan. Incoming! Flare! Flare! Uh-oh. Second missile! That don't look good. Visual wound going down! We're going down! Hold up. Holy fuck, that was awesome. What Modern Warfare 22 really excels at is presentation. The lifelike cutscenes are broken up with flashy moments of gameplay. This game's got super smooth animations and the transitions between cutscenes and gameplay are seamless. They take a much more cinematic approach to storytelling with these scripted moments and vignettes. It's that same philosophy that made World at War, Bioshock, and Halo 3 so awesome. Like when this guy gets shot, I fully expected him to just fall over dead. This guy is gonna die. Yep. Instead, he crawls away from the line of fire, leans up against the wall, and has a bit of dialogue. There's one in that hallway. It's more immersive this way than just having him die. Instead of watching the helicopter crash in a static cutscene, we're sprinting towards it while it's crashing. This poor lady. Don't try it. So we defend a down chopper and work our way towards a warehouse that suspiciously wasn't on the intel. What do we find? Listing missiles. Steaming Jesus. Naturally, this has the gang confused, especially when Soap finds... Take a look at this. Ghost, do you have Hassan? Negative. We found a weapons cache. Hassan's got missiles. They're American. And I know exactly what's going to happen now. We're copying Iron Man, people, all right? Shepard is gonna be the one selling US weapons under the table, though for far less compelling reasons than Obadiah. But this is it. This is the main plot of Modern Warfare 2, a scavenger hunt for the missiles. It's all they talk about. Ballistic missiles. Hassan's got missiles. Hassan has American missiles. I'll say again, Hassan's got missiles. American missiles. Hassan is moving missiles. Our ballistic missiles. Where are the missiles? If Hassan gets a missile, then perfect to move illegal cargo. Including missiles. Cargo could be containers housing missiles. We believe this is the missile. We need to get on the ground and see if the missiles are there. Predator missile ready for launch. We came here to stop a missile. Take out the oil rig with the missile. Disarm the missile. Disarm that missile! Who'd you get American missiles from? Where's the other missile? Where are the missiles, Coco? Oh, she doesn't she doesn't know where the missiles are. Oh, what do you get down? Where did he get that? The sound of a missile are in Chicago. Have you found the missiles yet? Missiles were never in Spain, the guidance system was borrowed. I can tell you where to find the missiles. To find your so-called terrorists and your missiles, you need me. I want the missiles. You knew that was a third missile. Creative writing. This is what's weird about the campaign. The missions are 10 out of 10. Characters, 10 out of 10. Story, 5 out of 10. Rarely does a game, movie, or story have such amazing characters, but like a super dumb plot. Usually it's the other way around, where you're like, man, this story would be so much better if this guy would just shut the fuck up. What about what's going on in that pinhead of yours? It feels so low stakes for Call of Duty, like, Focus, Mason. We're out of fucking time. The world is on the fucking brink of war. I want the missiles. Creative writing. We're just looking for three missiles. Iran is in possession of American missiles. Who? Who could have done this? The way Shepard's acting, it's so obvious what's going to happen. Even if you didn't play Modern Warfare 2, the story shouldn't be this predictable. Anyways, they destroy the missiles there and Laswell heads to Amsterdam to meet up with none other than Captain Motherfucking Bryce. 22's mission design is a far cry from the lazy, predictable levels of old. You know, run into a room, kill a bunch of guys, run into the next one, do the same thing, hop on a turret, stay there for 15 minutes. It never feels like you're just going from room to room and killing more guys. Wet work drops us in an open playground. It's just one area with one objective, clear the docks. How you do it and in what order you kill your enemies is completely up to you. Like 2019, Infinity Ward is willing to take off the training wheels and just let you have fun. Thank you for believing in my intelligence. Once you clear the docks, you link up with Price and infiltrate the boat. Listen. Spanish. 
Sounds like it. Turns out the Mexican cartel are involved with Hassan, the Los Almas. So we catch wind of a meeting in downtown Amsterdam and head to Intercept. They got bands playing, people get scared if you point a pistol at them for some reason. <laughs> Pussy. The shops and streets are so detailed. I mean, just just look at how gorgeous it is. It's like a tech showcase or something. Is that could it be? It is! We found Burger Town! You really feel like you're undercover, as you can now hide your weapon to blend in. So we capture this random guy who never appears again and never has anything to say, and we learn that they're going to transport Hassan over the southern border for some reason. Which means we get to take control of a Mexican Special Forces agents, Rodolfo and Alejandro. And notice that it's not Mexican Special Forces, it's a Mexican Special Forces. Mexican Special Forces. <laughs> Special Forces! Security is pretty lax at the border, as it always is, so we're able to cross it just as easily as Hassan. As we sneak through the suburbs, we encounter some rowdy civilians. Don't worry, fellas, I've been trained to de-escalate tense situations. Stop resisting! I said stop resisting! Mission failed. We'll get him next time. You want some too? Drop your weapon. Fuck you! Get, Get the fuck back, okay. now! Oh, oh, shoot. Hey, how about you don't come at me with a baseball bat next time, genius? We find Hassan's safe house and Hassan, who beats the shit out of us. No, let him burn, as Gobrani burned. Wait, aren't you even gonna watch them? They could get away. No, no, no. I'm going to leave them alone and not actually witness them dying. I'm just gonna assume it all went to plan, what? But Alejandro gets to prove what a homie he is by rescuing us. Soap, Ghost, this new guy Graves, and his shadow company work with the Mexican Special Forces to keep chasing Hassan. Alejandro! Sergeant McTavish! Call me Soap. Lieutenant! Last one says they call you Ghost. Actually, I believe he prefers to That'll be do! <laughs> That'll do! Can I just say I love Alejandro? His voice actor, <laughs> fucking fire. It's my second in command, Sergeant Major Rodolfo Parra. Te tengo miedo los fantasmas. You know Spanish? No. You will. I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. So we bullshit around Los Almos fighting the Mexican army. There's a really cool section where you're retreating down this mountain, but reinforcements are constantly flanking you. So you run and shoot back and take cover. It's awesome. Philip Graves saves our ass and says, You boys good to roll up a sun with some fire from the sky? I smell an AC-130 mission, baby. Do you? These levels always kick ass, and this one is no exception. You can hear the sound of the cannon fire hitting the ground through the mics of your team that's on the ground. For this is what COD is all about, man. Blowing shit up, watching the fireworks, and like COD 4, the similarities between gameplay and real life are still eerie. The mission is a success. We've captured Hassan. You speak Arabic? No. Farsi? No. Of course not. And I'll speak your bastardized medieval English. Because you're all uneducated street dogs. Ah, oh, see, we're getting off to a bad start here, son. You will learn to respect me when your nation sees fire. Here's the thing, Hassan. I don't respect you. Not as a villain. You're terribly generic, and and you just, you just suck. Take a look around, Hassan. Now you can either become part of the food chain, or you can start talking. I'm a hostage here. This is illegal. You are a prisoner of war. God. That voice, man. That that voice could seduce me. You're a prisoner of war. You're a prisoner of war. I want this bastard in permanent custody or looking up at the goddamn grass. General, killing Hassan is an act of war. Keeping him is illegal. Right now, he is too hot to hold. The mm. fuck are you talking about? The fuck are you talking about? Tactical plot hole inbound. Good God, this is fucking stupid. Okay, okay, okay. So we went through all this trouble. We just decimated the countryside, indiscriminately slaughtering villains, killing their livestock, destroying their buildings and houses. We blew up gas stations, schools, soccer fields. I an entire community and mountain village town is just obliterated trying to get this guy. And now we're afraid of breaking the law? Right here, you can't be serious. Who's 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 writing this crap? But Laswell's right. Without proof, we need to turn him loose. See where he leads us. What do you mean proof? 
Proof? Pro how about proof that he crossed the border illegally? You can't arrest him for that? What about arson? Arson's a crime. You can't just light things on fire. Uh, uh, assault? Attempted murder? Iran is not at war with Mexico. I've broken no laws. Assange's got missiles. Creative writing. Why is this dude even that important? He's only got three missiles, and they never said they were nukes. Killing Hassan is an act of war. And an act of war against who? Mexican drug cartels and terrorists? The United States has already declared war on those two things. The entire story almost collapses under the weight of this ginormous plot fuck up. It is, it is one of the worst plot devices I think I've ever seen, but the amazing cast of characters and their well-written dialogue manages to keep it from collapsing. Luckily, MW22 follows the worst part of the story with the best mission, Recon by Fire, aka All Gillied Up 2.0. Gaz and Price head to Spain to look for Hassan again. Like wet work, you're allowed to take out all the guys however you wish. You're sneaking through the grass, sniping enemies, all in a ghillie suit, using gas to smoke people out of buildings. This is what I love about Call of Duty, strategic well thought out mission design. There's a neat reference to 2019 if as Gaz you kill all the guys that you're supposed to sneak by. Not bad, soldier. Well, away from your days under principles. That wasn't for me. I knew that the moment I saw you in Piccadilly Circus. Thank you, sir. And here's another great detail. How about Price reciting the same lines Captain Macmillan told him in All Gillied Up? Try to anticipate their parts. Try to anticipate their parts. If you have to maneuver, do it slow and steady. No quick movements. If you have to maneuver, do it slow and steady. No quick movements. It's almost like he's passing the torch to Gaz, you know? They introduced a new backpack mechanic too, where you can swap out tacticals and lethals and you can carry like a bunch of stuff. This allows for really dynamic gameplay as you can pull out the heartbeat sensor and then see where the enemies are and then switch to the flashbangs. It's, it's awesome. It helps you feel prepared for whatever the game's gonna throw at you. But uh oh, Laswell gets captured and they don't execute her on the spot for some reason. So who cares about missiles? Let's go and save her ass. This next mission kicks some straight ass. Nikolai joins us as our chopper pilot. Farrah's on the ground with her gang as we assault this convoy. Die, you cartel scum. Oh shit. I don't think there's anybody on planet Earth who played this section was like, that was lame. This level has you driving down the longest road in the world. You're slipping in and out of cars, peeking out the window and blasting people. Anyways, we rescue Laswell and uh, thanks for the help, Farah. Wanna go on this next mission with us? No thanks, I'm just here for the fan service. I've got no impact on the plot whatsoever. Damn, rejected again. Missiles were never in Spain, the guidance systems were. And we're still looking for the missiles, man. We ain't even found one yet. Since everyone's a stupid face that let Hassan go, we now have to risk life and limb chasing another lead. The mysterious El Sinombre. Stoke McTavish, with his balls of steel, devises a plan to head straight into enemy territory, risking certain death and surrender himself to the cartel in order to gain their trust. You go in there and they'll kill you, hermano. I'll take my chances. Graves and the others tell him, tell the truth. And it's a wise idea. You got a name, Hawk. Huh? They call me Soap. <laughs> what the hell kind of name is Soap, eh? This is one of the few sections with dialogue choices, and at first you think, oh sweet, they're doing the, the Black Ops 2 and Cold War thing where your decisions will affect the outcome of the story, it, but no, they just kill you if you lie. So you're given access to the compound, and it's a lot of fun exploring. Like I said, there's a lot of little story beats, like a Mexican mayor offering recruits to the cartel in exchange for voters. There's a couple thugs beating up this one guy. You got an armory you can sneak into. This is the kind of stuff you can miss if you just rush through the game. I fucking love this mission, man. So we killed Diego, and it turns out El Sinombre is Valeria. So can we finally learn where the missiles are? To find your so-called terrorists and your missiles, you need me. Christ almighty. I want the missiles. 
I want the target, and I want Hassan. You already had Hassan! The 11th mission, Dark Water, has a sneak aboard an oil rig, which has the atmosphere of the first mission in COD 4. Except this time, the crates move around. Hell yeah, it's like a slip and slide. Oh boy, they're actually lethal. So, we get to the missile controls and are able to redirect its target to the rig. Yeah, good job. Good job, team. Nice work, Graves. Hey, man, how about after this we, we get a beer together, man? You're such a great buddy. I love your accent. Time to get back to base and plan our next move. It, what's this? Step away from the gate. What? This is my base. Not a base. This is a sizable covert facility, and I admire it. So I'm taking it. You boys have been relieved. Thank you for your service. No, no, no. no. I don't take orders from you. Don't you have your your own base for Shadow Company? I mean, what's so important about this one? There's there's still two missiles out there. Shouldn't we be planning like our next move inside the base together? Are you threatening us, soldier? I don't make threats. I make guarantees. So let's not do this. Yeah, let's let's not do this. We we have missiles to take care of. In fact, if if you wanted to betray us, it would actually make more logical sense to do it after we take care of the missiles. That way it would kind of parallel the end of Modern Warfare 2 where like Shepard got what he wanted and then was able to betray us. Why why not just ask for the base and, and come up with some bullshit lie about why you need it? I mean, if if you're dead set on betraying us right now, th then why not just kill everybody right here? And who the fuck do you think you are, cabron? My men are inside! I'm afraid not. What? Your men have been detained. What? These guys on the ground, Mexican Special Forces, 141, they are your brothers now. 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 Your men have been detained. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm calling Shepard. General Shepard sends his regards. He told me all wouldn't take this well. What did you and Shepard think was going to happen? Oh yeah, sure, Bl yeah, go ahead and block our path. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, what's that? You want to steal my base and imprison my men? Oh yeah, sure, that's, that's fine. Oh, you also want me to fuck off too? Oh, you sure, no problem, see you later. This betrayal is a slap in the face to Modern Warfare 2. Why did Graves turn? We don't know. Creative writing. You could not come up with something more contrived if you wanted. I mean, it's clear the writers wanted to have their own epic betrayal scene, but this ain't it, Chief. There's no logic behind this. No surprise. But miraculously, everyone has plot armor and no main characters die in this shootout. Alejandro is captured while Soap and Ghost escape. Once again, Modern Warfare 22 follows up the stupidest plot points with one of the best missions, Alone. So at least I can partially forgive the game since this is so moody and atmospheric. Alone fully embraces a survival horror style of gameplay, something we've never seen in a COD campaign. That's bold. That's a bold, stout Guinness right there. You're weak, isolated, have to salvage metal and supplies to make improvised tools and traps. Along the way, you banter back and forth with Ghost. I want to be like you when I grow up. You want to be better than me, Johnny? Got my work cut out then. That you do. Think I'll live that long? Probably not. What about Captain Price? Price isn't here, is he? The old man can't bail us out, not this time. I trust the Captain. If he knew, he'd be here. Be careful who you trust, Sergeant. People you know can hurt you the most. Good advice, LT. Ammo is scarce. I mean, they can make a whole ass game like this, to be honest. Gives me Resident Evil Village vibes. Wait, 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 wait. Graves has gone crazy and he's been murdering countless civilians for no discernible reason? Do it. Fucking hell. You got the base, dude. What, what the fuck do you want? Marks are killing everything in their path. War crimes. Makes me want to commit a few war crimes of my own. <laughs> what the fuck, Soap? What? Makes me want to commit some war crimes of my own. Makes me want to commit some war crimes of my own. <laughs> Take it easy, man. Makes me want to commit a few war crimes of my own. Once Soap escapes Graves' men, they regroup with Price for another prison break, similar to when we rescued Price from the Gulag. Good times. It has that same cool camera gimmick we saw in 2019, and it's a lot of fun here. After the prison break, we've got one last task. Take out Graves, take out Hassan, and then find that rat Shepard. We'll need a team to do this, though. A ghost team.
If you're in, take a mask. If you're not, boom. Yeah, the only boss fight in the game is a great one against Graves and his tank. Payback time, motherfucker. We find Elsa Nombre and learn that the last missile is in Chicago with Hassan. There's an awesome rapple sequence where you're shooting people upside down, another section with that improvised combat from alone, and at last we have a showdown with generic Muslim villain number 37. After a job well done, Price, Laswell, and the others link up at a bar for some much needed r and &R. I'm glad it's all over. No. Not. Oh. They're working with someone new. We don't know his name. Who's that? He's not bad. Come on. Come on. Don't keep me in the dark. Tell me who it is. Show me the picture. Who is it? Who is it? Ronald Reagan? Who is he? Makarov. Oh shit, baby. The saga continues. I love this ending, setting up for the next campaign DLC story, whatever. In conclusion, this is a fantastic campaign, gameplay-wise. Every single mission does something unique. The best moments of Modern Warfare 22 are to banter between all these fan-favorite characters. The worst parts are when these same characters act like brain-dead morons. The story feels so low stakes. Nobody dies, everyone is fine, but as a consolation, there is one final scene. That's what I'm talking about! No rushing, baby! Let's go! A lot of people had problems with this, say it's too fan servicey. I love it. And that's the campaign. It's a great ride. Ghost especially is a huge standout. Ironic that all this effort could go into making the most realistic and badass campaign to date, but not enough effort could go into fixing the plot. Now before we get into the core gameplay for multiplayer, uh, I have some disappointing yet unsurprising news. Call of Duty still ain't as cool or real as it used to be. Style points, people. These games used to have style. Despite some missions and multiplayer maps being based on real locations, Modern Warfare 22 pussies out yet again by having to come up with a bunch of fake shit. I swear to God, if anybody calls this the cast off, I'm gonna punch you in the dick. It's an AK-47. What's next? We gonna call frag grenades explodey balls? It, it can't be a money issue because I've seen indie mill sim games that can somehow muster the real versions of these weapons. Hell, this very franchise used to do that. But for some reason, Call of Duty Judges they just can't get the rights anymore. Oh, don't mind me, I'm just leveling up my .50 GS. Sounds like a video game console. No, that's a Desert Eagle. You stupid! Vanguard screwed this aspect up immensely. How do you like fake World War II weapons with eight attachments and red dot sights? Cooper Carbine? Cooper Carbine? What the fuck is that? Look, I know it has no effect on gameplay, but Call of Duty started as an homage to military history and authenticity, and it shatters my immersion constantly when some weapons are just given fake-ass phony names for no good reason. Why is there a guy cosplaying as a Japanese samurai in a game called Modern Warfare. Now, the big question, did they learn from Vanguard and put actual factions into the game? Um, kind of. If you like being part of the spec grew and tech ops, <laughs> why aren't you trying to make factions cool? I, it's, it's better than my team and the enemy team. Anything's better than that. But like, why aren't we playing as the Los Almas with some like Mexican themed intros? or the Op 141, they're, all, they're already in the game. Can you at least try to make kick-ass music for the factions? Ground war. Capture the flag. Capture the objective. Domination. Let's do this. Speaking of fake names, why is it called the gunship and not the AC-130 anymore? Matter of fact, listen to how unenthusiastic the announcers are. Hostile gunship overhead. Enemy AC-130 above! I don't know, man. It just seems like Call of Duty used to have such a cool style with each game, and they just they just abandoned that. Because once again, we're forced to endure the painfully boring operator system, featuring such classics as 
Man with grilled cheese stapled to his helmet. Why, why are half the operators not even seen in the campaigns or any part of Call of Duty? Oh, you got Gustav. You got the guy with the big mustache. Only because, like, yeah, honestly, dude, you, you're fucking, you subconsciously made me want to play him because I heard your mustache comment in your video. And I was like, you know, he does have a sick mustache. Yeah, it's Mario. This is He's Mario and fucking <laughs> Call of Duty. Captain the Price said we have to stop at the missile. <laughs> like I said, MW22 definitely uh, recaptures the feeling of the old COD lobbies. Well, they're fucking awful. Sit the fuck down, sit the fuck down. Cause you're a fucking little nigger and you're going down. for objective? Sit Look at you, down. bro! You're nine kills, bro! That is literally negativities, bro! Get your fucking money up, you fucking black George Floyd welfare collection hey, cotton picking pork market son of a bitch! Hey, Clearly this man didn't agree to the Call of Duty code of conduct. In my video on Trash Talk, we discussed the importance of letting players exchange words with each other. Yes, it can be wildly uncomfortable, but also entertaining as hell. GG's guys, GG's, GG's. Shut up you Mexican, shut up you Mexican. You're doctor. In an industry that continues to cut out social features, I'm glad Infinity Ward took a stand against that, allowing voice chat across teams at the end of matches and proximity chat during. This was such an amazing feature in Halo 2 to hear the frustration of your opponents after you killed them. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> it's a callback to the matchmaking of old in the lobbies we said kids couldn't survive these days. So, it's lacking style and grace, but does this Call of Duty have a funny face? Is it as batshit fun and wacky as Modern Warfare 2? The answer will surprise you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to kill someone with a noob tube. Oh, oh there we go, noob tube. Let's go. Modern Warfare 2! We're back, we're back, baby! Yes, MW2 absolutely kills it with the gameplay. One particular category that stands out to me is the amount of viable play styles. Both in sheer number of sandbox items and because of how balanced the game is. The basic design for a weapon needs to be fun to shoot and fun to be shut at. I firmly agree with this quote. A lot of COD fans are easily frustrated with these games, and I am too. But to be honest, I don't care if I'm killed by a knife-wielding maniac galloping across the maps, slicing down everyone in their path. If you have a knife class, please stand. Just know that I salute you all. Because of your service, the legacy of the Commando perk lives on. Hoorah! I find it hilarious when I get killed by a point-blank rocket. The damn javelin is back too. I love getting killed by that. The tack insertion returns. There's a shock charge that has this Halo CE plasma grenade sound effect. I've seen people quick scoping. Some matches, all 12 players are throwing decoy grenades everywhere and utter chaos. Pistols are also really good this time around. I once shot a VTOL jet out of the sky only to sprint forward and... Can't even be mad at that. Speaking of streaks, thank you for adding the option of score streaks. I like playing the objective and, and don't always want to camp, so thank you. One of the most amazing details is when your chopper gunner or AC-130 is shot down, you get this amazing little scene. It's getting hot up here. Taking heavy fire. Hold on, hold on, it's here. We're losing Delta. However, it seems most streaks are too easy to shoot down. The CUAV can be taken out almost immediately by any weapon with six shots. Everything seems a bit too fragile. Most COD games have a handful of weapons that utterly dominate and everyone ends up using them because it takes so long to level up guns. This time, however, nothing feels too overpowered or frustrating. The 725 even returns. But it seems Infinity Ward actually playtested the game this time. The raw MG is a freaking laser beam, man. Use it to shoot down vehicles, it's absolutely lethal. Modern Warfare 22 packs in a whopping 51 unique weapons, 41 primaries, 10 secondaries, 21 perks, 19 kill streaks, 15 field upgrades, 10 tacticals, 9 pieces of equipment, 
and 12 vehicles. Not to mention what feels like 300 attachments. I mean, Jesus. Unfortunately, there is quite a bit of overlap. A lot of the attachments are just like exactly the same. Like I've got four attachments that all do basically the exact same thing. There's also three versions of the AK-47, which is unnecessary. But with the new progression system, players are encouraged to change their builds regularly. It's honestly quite exciting to grind this game. I don't really care about camos, but I love the idea of maxing out the levels on each gun. I mean, seriously, I haven't felt a desire to grind COD like this since 2019. And before that, it was Black Ops 1. So while every gun so far has been fun to use, not every weapon is fun to be shot by. For some reason, Infinity Ward thought it would be a good idea for snipers and marksman rifles to not have any flinch at all. Here's a situation that sucks ass and happens quite often. Player one gets the drop on player two and shoots him twice. Should have the upper hand, but player two's aim isn't thrown off and he hits a headshot with little effort. Okay, so what's with this fucking bullshit? Not too much has been added to the game mechanically, more has been taken out. Mounting, doors, sliding, reloading while ADS. All the quality of life stuff is still there. And the core gameplay is as you'd expect. Overall movement and flow feels mostly perfect. Not too fast, not too slow. It's similar to 2019 without the sluggish weapon feeling. Slide canceling and bunny hopping, though not completely removed, have been very much nerfed. A positive change for me personally, though many others are upset. I'd equate it to button combos in Halo 2. It's like, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see that. I don't want to have to do it. I don't like it when major exploits become the skill gap. You got those drop shotting dorks that hit the deck every time they see a fly move. And dolphin diving has a purpose now. Great for sprinting into objectives and avoid taking fire. Reload canceling has been replaced with a new mechanic that allows you to space out parts of the animation. And just like in 2019, the reload animations and attention to detail are the best in the industry. Mwah. What else is new? Wall hanging. Instead of always clambering over a wall, now you can hang on it. If you got a pistol, you can peek over for some surprise kills. This also tears down the grid block-like feeling of COD's recent map design where invisible walls run rampant. Tarak especially has a ton of walls like this where you can kind of break the flow of the map a bit, allowing for creative and unpredictable movement. Pistols have gotten some love as a secondary. Now switching to your other weapon is faster than reloading. If you empty the mag of your primary, you automatically swap to the pistol, and this gives them some much needed utility on the battlefield. All right, acting mailman, give us your thoughts on the maps, huh? I bet you hate them, right? Wrong. I think the map design is pretty good. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. It's It's been a low bar, no question, but COD map design as a whole has regressed tremendously since Modern Warfare 3. After a while, it does kind of feel like same 6v6 small three lane maps. This game would greatly benefit from a map like High Rise, Wasteland, or Afghan. I can't believe there's no remakes yet. I can only think of one map that I genuinely don't enjoy, and that's Seraph Bay and Ground War. It's just too big, there's too much running, reminds me of Stonehaven. Maps ain't perfect though, some modes aren't optimized well. Mercado Las Almas has one side spawn on B in Domination, and that really messes up how Domination is played. In fact, the maps are so good, Infinity Ward might be facing some legal troubles, since two of them are based on real locations. Breenberg Hotel has upset the real-life Dutch hotel. A spokesperson says, More generally, we don't support games that seem to encourage the use of violence. That seem to? Games that seem to encourage violence? Nobody thought Modern Warfare reflected some random hotel's views on human life. Valderas Museum has been cut for what some speculate as similar reasons. It's unfortunate this is affecting the map selection. I'm getting off topic though. The maps have pretty great flow. The more I played, the better I could predict engagements. There's enough routes and paths through each one that I never feel like I'm walking into a meat grinder with zero options and no chance of survival. Zarqua Hydroelectric has that cool water gimmick and it's perfect for a one-off map. I see a lot of people bitching about the Santa Santa border crossing. Let me just say I would rather have this map than anything from COD World War II or Infinite Warfare. Perhaps you don't remember how boring some of these COD maps used to be. I get why people don't like it, but I much prefer experimentation and gimmicking maps than just the streamlined copy and pasted crap. And Infinity Ward seems to be doing what Bungie did with Reach, that is reusing areas from one mode into another. 
Border Crossing is in 6v6, but it's also a small part of the Ground War map. Parts of Rust can be found in Tarak, Mercado Los Almos, and Said. You might say this is cheap, but if it means we get more overall maps, then I'm all for it. Infinity Ward delivered a pretty decent amount of modes here. It's kind of dumb that Hardcore was withheld to pump up numbers for the release of Season 1. Genuinely don't know why they did that or why they're calling it Tier 1. But we also got some Counter-Strike-esque modes like Prisoner Rescue and Knockout. I like getting revived because I suck ass in One Life modes and die immediately every time. You can tell Infinity Ward's goal is to kind of appeal to the Escape from Tarkov crowd and a bit of the Rainbow Six Siege crowd. They're able to provide the core Call of Duty experience while also branching out to others. Then there's also Invasion. No, it's not as cool as Reach. It's basically just Big Team Slayer with a bunch of bots running around and no objectives. I mean, it's kind of fun, great for grinding weapon XP, but I feel like COD World War II tried to copy operations from Battlefield 1. <laughs> And Invasion should just try that again. The real highlight is Ground War. Ironically, Call of Duty is the one doing Conquest better than Battlefield these days. It's missing the cringe voice lines, though. I am not overconfident. I'm just better than everyone else. Ground War whoops ass. Matches are long and intense. There's all sorts of vehicles. It's perfect for groups of four to mess around in. The big ass helicopters that you can spawn in and fly in, those are awesome. Oh my god, what the fuck? Did you guys see the helicopters crashed into each other? And both exploded in midair. I've had so many hilarious moments in Ground War. You gotta be shitting me. Who sits in- who sits there? Why there? Why? Why are you prone in a fucking random corner? This is my new mission. Kill these fucking guys up here. I have no kills. Get- get that shit. Get that shit out of here! What are you doing? What are you doing?! Why?! So all the maps, modes, mechanics, movement, the general feel of the game, none of it sucks ass to me. And that's why I'm calling this multiplayer awesome. But what does Modern Warfare 22 fuck up? Well, it's time we went there. In the age of modern gaming, no developer is allowed a smooth launch. And while this video is being recorded the day before Season 1 comes out, I'm still gonna talk about this stuff anyways. The game is missing a ton of core features, but worse, it's been wildly unstable. I've had multiple crashes. Sometimes you and your friends crash simultaneously. Like, how does that happen? Anyway. Oh, Whoa. don't tell me the game Whoa. crashed. Did it just ha- yeah. No, mine did that. Mine's still frozen, bro. Wow. Did I really just do that? Fuck the Vault Edition. This didn't wow, fix shit. Wow, it did shit. crash! Oh my god, it crashed it for both crashed. of us? It crashed, yeah! Yo, fucking wow. what? Wait a minute, like, the game actually fucking crashed both of you at the same time? You probably wow. crashed the whole lobby. The whole server, yeah. I Please, no! My game crashed! No! Fucker! It crashed the game for you. Bro, you gotta be shitting me. I was doing so good. That is another game crash. Are you, you fucking, fucking kidding, kidding me? me? Mm -mm. It didn't crash. No way in hell did it crash. Game crash. Playing solo, you don't have too many issues, but if you dare to share the fun with friends, the game will stop searching for a match constantly, forcing everyone to leave the party, rejoin, but then you gotta navigate the godforsaken menus to group up again, and then there's a cooldown on inviting people, so if they don't accept the invite right away, you gotta wait two minutes for some godforsaken reason. Everyone's thinking it, I'm just saying it. User interface sucks donkey balls. <laughs> No proof of that. It's not as bad as Cold War, which would literally crash every other match. Every time it loads a new match, the menus just freeze for 30 seconds, and you don't know what the fuck is going on. Hello? Can I, uh, can I change my custom class? Can, can I activate a double XP token? I, uh, I'll buy the Vault Edition, how about that? Is it stop freezing the game and, and, and I'll spend money? Ah, screw it, I'm grabbing a beer. Most of the basic quality of life features have been surgically removed by the former Hulu employees hired to make this UI. Uh, currently, there is no way to check any kind of lifetime stats, a first for the Call of Duty franchise, and a low point. 
There's there's no stats in general. I, how much time have I played? How many kills have I gotten with this weapon? What is my performance over the last five maps? Used to be Call of Duty was like the best in the business about giving you all the unnecessary stats you cared about. You know, what emblems and nameplates have I unlocked? You can't even see your deaths on the scoreboard until the match ends. Well, at least it's better than not having a scoreboard at all, so count your blessings. If you compare MW22 to the 2009 version, it's astounding how much has been cut. There ain't even a barracks anymore. Oh, I guess they gotta patch that in now. Modern gaming. It astounds me how much effort has been put into every facet of gameplay from the visuals, the sound design, the animations, the customization, and yet nobody could be fucked to include the bare essentials. Like stats? Remember when you could keep track of challenges because the game had challenges? Oh, 22 has challenges, but it's only dailies. Why the fuck do companies keep doing this? Why do they strip down the game and just three daily challenges? Halo Infinite did this and it sucked ass. Overwatch did this and it sucked ass. Modern Warfare 22 is doing it and it sucks ass. Stop doing it, game developers, please. Stop it. Get some help. What I miss is like the diverse challenges, you know, there was stuff like kill an enemy with a care package and you get this cool emblem. Get a throwing knife kill while flash banged. Where is all of that? Then there's simple stuff like being able to see locked calling cards or emblems. Apparently there's almost 200, but all I see are 16 different pride flags. This user interface makes me want to commit a few war crimes of my own. I say to hell with these horizontal box menus. Embrace drop down menus. Also, why on God's green earth do I have to restart the game to play the campaign? No other COD does this and they never have because it's awful. I always forget there's an after action report because it's tucked away in the bottom left. Left, almost like the designers intentionally don't want you to know. There are no medals or accolades, leaderboards, no hardcore, no ranked modes. You can't turn off crossplay if you're on PC because fuck you. Can't save custom blueprints for the gunsmith. There's no theater. For some reason, there's no notifications when you unlock a new camo. Sometimes notifications pop up with a challenge that you completed, but it doesn't say what challenge it was. Probably the funniest thing are activating XP tokens. It, it doesn't show a timer. Why? 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 You gotta pull out your stopwatch like a caveman to know when it runs out. <laughs> and what's really funny is like XP token. Like there, there's three dots here when it's very clear that they could add an N at the end. Yet even though the UI is obnoxiously bad, when I start blasting my gats in a match, I mostly forget about it. At the very least, Infinity Ward has said they plan to improve the UI, so I eagerly await. That's a good sign. Please fix it. Don't fuck this up again. Spec Ops once again makes a return and... I just hope this shit is playable, okay? I have low standards now. Oh my god, what? what how did I trigger that? Don't go in there. Why not? <laughs> what did I say? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is playable. Okay. Okay. Okay, buddy. I told you to crawl under that. God, you asshole. <laughs> well, well, well. That was fun. Now let's check out the other missions. All two of them. I can't say I'm surprised. Truth be told, I figured they would just get rid of Spec Ops completely in favor of Warzone 2, that DMZ mode, and we're going to be getting co-op raiding in Call of Duty? Like Destiny? This game is fucking massive, man. Yeah, I think this franchise really benefits from a solid PvE experience because you don't always want to be sweating buckets in the multiplayer. If there's one thing we should all agree on, it's how ambitious this game is. I think the Spec Ops missions are well designed. They got some collectibles, cutscenes, story beats. But without a decent survival mode and more missions, it's not a lot to chew on. Hopefully this changes. At least it's playable, right? Well, when it comes down to it, my issues with Modern Warfare 22 are mostly superfluous or stylistic. It's more with how the game functions than how the game plays, and that's a big difference. What took me some time to understand is that when I got frustrated with MW22, it wasn't because it's a bad game. It's Call of Duty. Getting shot around corners when you're five meters behind them, or getting massacred by a bunch of SPR using drop shotting, quick scoping, butt plugs, 
That's just how it's always been. The fact that I'm still playing this says a lot about it. I put like seven hours into Vanguard and I was done. For the first time in forever, a new Call of Duty delivers. Though far from perfect, its failures and missteps are so small when compared to the last decade of releases. Though the plot is wacky, stupid, and very low stakes, the campaign is one of the best in terms of gameplay. None of the issues I have with 22 are game breaking or can't be fixed. In fact, many of them have already been fixed and that's the saving grace for it. To Call of Duty Modern Warfare 22, I give you the highest of honors. I haven't called a new COD game awesome in a long, long time. To the staff at Infinity Ward and all the other studios that worked on this game, I'm so happy I can say this, if but one last time. That's how it's done. Nice job, Rangers. Would you rather have your life narrated by Commander Zavala or Peter Dinklage Ghost? Zavala for sure. Would you rather be killed by a swarm of bees or ants? Bees, because it'll be faster. Would you kindly bang my sister so I can have an awesome brother-in-law? I don't think that's how it works. Ever thought about diving into the Sonic franchise? I've thought about running into it. What's your favorite moment in your favorite Halo campaign? The flood reveal in Combat Evolved. Is there a game or franchise you want to play but just never got around to doing it? There's a lot of those. Was there a content creator that inspired you to start your YouTube journey? There's a lot of them. Angry Video Game Nerd, Red Letter Media, I Hate Everything, Angry Joe. All those big review guys. Thank you to all my fantastic patrons. Love you all. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace.